timing belt, accessory belts, radiator fans, and main coolant hoses are off. Um, intake resonator and air box is off. Let me change to the UV light where you can see hopefully some of the staining of coolant drips. Let's go underneath and try to see if I can find where that oil leak, that oil leak is. Shitty Harbor Freight adapter is, swivel adapter is leaking. It's really annoying. So... Hard to say. That crank pulley will come right off. Let me get that off for you. There goes that. Let me get the light back up there. Right there is where the valve cover gasket meets the cylinder head. And hard for me to guess where the source of the oil drip is, but it would make sense that it's that valve cover gasket. Every once in a while I'll get a big whiff of oil burning in the, in the vent air, and I think that is oil dripping down from somewhere down onto the exhaust. and. And it's really hard to tell where, but... Okay, you're sort of up behind the shield where I can't see. But, uh, yeah, another really big drip uh, leak there. And I don't know that it's... Just that it's uh, all over the valve cover and also the head. I wonder if it's just a leak from up here and spraying back or something like that. Oh, this side looks even worse. Or just as bad, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Lots of... There's the uh, block to head. And that doesn't look too bad gasket material that's sticking out is, I don't know what type of gasket material that is, but all the way back there, it doesn't consume a lot of oil, barely any actually, um, I have, you can see that cam sprocket is already off. That can pulley, whatever they call it, is already off, and I'm actually seeing that like thing, that black thing that's sticking out right there. Looks like a gasket that got pinched last last time this thing was surfaced. Here is the first driver's side cam seal, and I'm not seeing like a little drip of oil that I might expect to see there but I'm not really sure what that would usually look like so there's a little oil sitting right there so actually that seal might be gone as well so yeah like I said timing gear is all off so it gives us a chance to see a lot of this stuff. I do have a new water pump to install. Um, it might just be the gasket that's gone, but in my Toyota pickup with the 
22RE <clears throat> engine. There was a little weep hole that uh, when the seal, the internal seal of the thing went, it would start slowly dripping coolant out. <clears throat> and I was hoping this would have something similar, but I'm now... Yeah, I'm confused as to where the leak was coming from. But the water pump will be off soon, and um, I'll be able to compare it to the new one and hopefully get an idea for where that was. Get unfold myself from under here. So, while well, I've got all this junk off of it, <clears throat> uh, it should be easy to get the valve covers off and take a look at valve lash on this thing. Um, it's a 90,000 mile, this is the 90,000 mile service. And I'm actually doing it at around 88,000 miles. Here's the cam position sensor. And yeah, I'm wondering if this thing was part of where that leak was originated. Um, yeah, valve covers are gonna come off and I'll adjust the valve lash or check them at least. This, unlike the EA engines, doesn't have the um, does not have the um, hydraulic self-adjusting valve lifters. There's the uh, specs for the valve clearance. This is sort of the first time I've really gone deep in, on this on this car. Um, it's a lot harder than my truck's engine, which is the four-cylinder. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up for tonight since the sun's starting to set. And um, tomorrow I want to do the valve covers, seals for the camshaft, each side. Take off the water pump. Again, sorry, the camera work. Take off the water pump, inspect that. I've also got a new belt tensioner, which is exciting. Um... I basically bought all new equipment from Rock Auto, and um, yeah, just take it step by step, I guess. Take a peek down the throttle body while we're here. Uh, there's the throttle. Headphones trying to pull out. There's down the throttle body, and. I've seen worse. I uh, might, might decide to take at least the throttle body off and maybe spray that down. But I'm hoping that I don't have to pull this engine anytime soon for um, for head gaskets. Uh, I'm gonna try to adjust these as exhaust valves on camera. This is the passenger side, so right hand side of this EJ22 1989. Single overhead cam motor. Right now, right now, I don't have any play on those, which means that it's either depressing or letting up um, the valves, the exhaust valves in this case. This one does move. So I want to get them to both, both to the point where they're wiggling and I, I can get that sort of, that lash there. So I'm going to rotate, this is just loosely attached, you can see that if I rotate clockwise in this case, it doesn't really matter, but you can, I can rotate and then it starts to depress those exhaust valves to open the exhaust valve, the exhaust ports on the, on the cylinder, which we are looking at there. So if I back it off, it now begins to open up the intake valves on number three cylinder. You can't see that probably. But so yeah, I want to back it off so no cams are near this. Now we should have latch on both um, number one exhaust and number three. So I'll go ahead and wiggle. There you go, we got the latch. It should still be the case.
case on number three. Yep, I'm still that latch. <clears throat> go ahead and remove this pulley just so I have a little better access. I have got a 10 millimeter wrench. A box wrench, or I guess either type of wrench should be fine. And a feeler gauge. The valve clearance of the engine at cold, according to the label that's underneath the hood, is 0.15 up to 0.3 millimeters. <clears throat> Honestly, uh, I have a feeling that these valves are within that. Um, I haven't measured each to, to you know, verify that, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put it to the tighter end of that spectrum. So if I can go from 0.15 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters, I'm just going to set it to 0.17 millimeters, 0.178 technically, or 7th thou. So, right. So again, we have lash on both of these. Now I'm going to go ahead and back off the, tight, the uh, set nuts. So, you see me go ahead and shoot on. We don't need to hold the screw necessarily in this point, in this, in this point, but go ahead and crack these loose. That one, there's that one, and we just back them way off just to make it easy for us to uh, to adjust the uh, set screw there. And I'll do the same on number three cylinder. Crack that. Crack that. The intake doesn't have these shared rocker arms like the exhaust port does. There's a single cam for the exhaust port, and it goes to these two different uh, tappets, I suppose. So we loosen those. I drop my wrench. Now I have a small flathead screwdriver, which will allow me to adjust these. I'll start with this frontmost valve here on number one. There's 16 valves on this engine, four intakes on either side, so eight, and then eight on the bottom for the exhaust. Um, what I've done so far is I've, again, we, we need to make sure that the rocker arms can wiggle, so they got that lash, slight amount of lash. Um, I've already done the intake, so I won't even mention those, but I've gone ahead, I've run down these adjusting screws, now these exhaust ones, since I don't have a screwdriver that's tight enough to get in there, and I do have the engine in the vehicle still, um, I've got my feeler gauge, which I said I set to 0.178 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and insert the feeler gauge between between uh, the tappet and the valve stem. So right now there's plenty of space in that where that feeler gauge is at. So I'm going to go ahead and just with my fingers in this in this instance, now I can loosen, lefty loosey, or righty tighty. And that's the in inside screw, which has the um, the slot for a, uh, a flathead screwdriver if you happen to be working on the engine on the stand, which is the ideal scenario for a Subaru, but usually you're not going to be able to do that. So in this case, I'm getting a little bit of resistance on my 0.178 millimeter feeler gauge. And this is usually what I, maybe a little tighter than this, is usually what I shoot for. And with the engine in the vehicle, it's really tricky. Honestly, it's almost the point of doing this. But perhaps it'll help my fuel economy down the line, especially once I get the timing belt back on um, and retimed. So that's not quite enough drag, in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that a little bit. Again, ideally, you'd be using a screwdriver, but. I don't want it to the point where I can't pull it out. I want just a little bit of drag, so I'm going to back off about an eighth of a turn. And there, maybe there, on that valve stem, you can see that it's sort of starting to bind up and letting the um, the uh, feeler gauge sort of bend a little bit there. This is being pinched. 
I'm going to go ahead and call that good. So I'm going to tighten down the set nut. And again, ideally, you want the screwdriver blade properly on the end of that tap it um, for adjusting the uh, screw. And then we are holding that to go ahead and tighten down that set nut. And again, engage that screw, though at this point it's not really going to rotate, or it shouldn't rotate really. Go ahead and just tighten that down. I'm not applying a lot of pressure to that. It, it, it shouldn't move. Now we'll do the same on that other block as well. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my light. It's a big mess. Again, I'm going to get the feeler gauge in there. There we go. I'm going to run down that screw a little bit so it's just beginning to pinch on the feeler gauge. And I can feel it binding. It's sort of resisting to me pulling it out. And it's sort of chattering on the way back in. case the set screw isn't really rotating at all sometimes you can sometimes it'll tighten up with the nut but in this case it's going to be doing that and we can continue that time I happen to still have the feel gauge in there and I can verify that the resistance is very similar to what it was previously I'm going to take that out give the uh, set screw a fire the set nut a final torque and it, it, these aluminum engines it's really just you know somewhat tight not forcing it too much. And that, though I don't know that these rocker arms are necessarily aluminum, I'm not sure if you that is. Um, but in theory, our exhaust valve should now be set. What I can do is check a second time with the feeler gauge, and I've been doing this on all 16 valves, like I said, so far, or 12 up to this point. And there's still just a tiny bit of resistance there, similar sort of bunching up as it goes in, maybe a little looser than it was previously, but this spec is um, not super, super critical. And like I said, I'm on this. In this case, I'm setting the the uh, the lash uh, on the tighter range, tighter end of the range. Um, and that's pretty much it. You just have need to, you know, take your time and be patient because, especially if you're doing with the engine in the vehicle, you really don't have a whole lot of space to work with. Um, but yeah, if you're patient, and if you, um, I guess if you've been doing research on uh, the project, then you should be set um, to do an easy job. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on this number three cylinder. Verify on that, that one's a little looser, but honestly, they were really loose when I, when I first started measuring them, so I'm not gonna worry about it. As a friend once told me, um, the way he does valves is um, by remembering that slappy valves are happy valves. So, um, yeah. Uh, wrong adjustment. I haven't filmed a video in a long time. Knock all these expensive parts off the top of the engine. And there we go, there's those two intake valves. Again, this is the single overhead cam EJ22. Um, perhaps not again, maybe I didn't even say that in the first place. These intakes are pretty difficult because with this generation of the EJ22, you've got the spark plug tubes and spark plug tube seals which go around a little boot that sort of sits over the top. Those guys down there. So let me go ahead and show you as well. Say we've just, we don't know where the cams are necessarily. Sorry, let me get a better angle for you there. Let's say that we don't necessarily know where the cams are at. So, um, you know, just beginning this process, I'm going to go ahead and start feeling the valves for a little bit of lash. Now, the intakes typically have a smaller lash value than the exhausts. But, so these ones I can feel a little bit of a, a wiggle, a little bit of a tick between them, that lash. 
And on these ones, however, they're tight. Get a better angle. So these ones, they're tight. Now, I'm gonna grab a pulley for this. Number three cylinder was a little bit tight. I can't adjust the, I can't feel the lash between those valves. This one's totally open. So it's, if we rotate the camshaft, we should notice, watch the number three cylinder um, valves. They should bind up a little bit right there. So if I'm doing the intakes, then I really want to make sure that I don't have any, that I don't have any of the valves being activated because um, we're doing the adjustment on the, with the um, cam off of the cam lobe. And then there we've got the lash back. I can feel it clicking back and forth. Sometimes you can even hear them. These ones not the case. But yeah, that's the place where you want to adjust the valves. And you can do that for each side of the engine, in this case, on the Subaru. Um, over there behind that pulley. Over there. That's the cam. Or no, excuse me. That's the cam shaft for the other side of the engine. Number two and four. So yeah, that's doing that. And I think that's all I want to cover right now. Valves are successfully adjusted. So this is the passenger side camshaft oil seal location. This is where the camshaft is. Um, the old seals were really difficult to get out using the inadequate tools that I had on hand. Um, there is part of one of them. I ended up using a small flat blade screwdriver and sort of levering around um, for the driver's side one. The, um, the edges of this were a lot more marred up on the driver's side. This one got a little bit less damage on the, on the lip there. So I'm just at this point making sure that we're relatively clean before I try to shove the new seal in there. And with my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna do my best to clean this. Make sure all the little pieces of rubber that I um, ripped out on accident um, haven't gotten lodged in here at all. Like a little bit on the bottom that I just got out. Wipe that on something else. Bottom looks okay. I would like to attempt to get a visual on the ceiling surface. Now it's going to be really tricky. I don't know that I'm actually going to be able to do any kind of legit check of this, but I'm trying to just check because the seal rides along this where this mirror surface begins. And um, on very high mileage engines, which this is not one, the seal lip that rides around there can actually begin to wear that out. They make a, um, there's various types of products that you can use that slip over a very th uh, thin steel sleeve that'll slip over the end of the shaft and create a new sealing surface. And I've heard good things about those, but I don't think this engine needs it yet, though. Perhaps I can see a beginning of a a ridge on the inside there. Let me get a better. There's my other towel. So there, where my fingernail is, you can see there's a bit of a lip on the inside there, but it's hard for me to necessarily. I can't exactly feel it, at least not with these crude tools that I'm working with. You know, perhaps I can feel it just a tiny bit. Sometimes you can get seals that ride up on a different surface or theoretically, though it's not a good idea, um, 
only push the seal part of the way through so it's not actually riding on that surface but I have a feeling that I don't want to do that with this guy I want to just make sure they drive all the way home and give the best seal that they can but I think there's also a pretty decent chance that I just won't even get a good seal out of these and I'll still have a slow weep of oil yeah hard to say with this one uh, I'm gonna try to set you up over on the driver's side Ideally, you know, I'd have the shaft out of the engine and then be able to, I don't know, mount it somewhere better. So I can also see the ridge on that guy, or a surface. This one feels smoother than the other one. At least I'm not immediately feeling a, a grab as my pointer tool, as my pick sort of slides along there. Though perhaps there's a bit of a roughness there. Um... Yeah, since this is a 90,000 mile engine, I think I'm just going to roll with it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drive in a new seal. Alright, these seals that I'm using are Felpro TCS 46008. Camshaft front seal kit. So, let me just sort of for this guy there. Now, I do have a DIY tool for driving these home. It is where to go. This guy. It is this. This is a Toyota Pinion crush sleeve. Doesn't really matter as long as you can as long as you can press around the race and not damage the seal as you do it and be able to drive it. Like that's a little bit close to the inner diameter, but I think that it's probably going to be fine. Um, I didn't really compare to the old seals, but you can see that pattern there. Um, hopefully that creates a decent seal against that worn surface on the camshaft. But, oh, and actually on this one, you can actually see some of the chowdering that I did on the outside edge, or I guess the inside edge of that, whatever. I think it'll be fine. Now, these usually have a little spring inside a little spring inside there. There's a spring riding up on the inside of that. Now, I'm actually also seeing a couple bits of rubber that I want to clear out because apparently I didn't do a great job of cleaning this. There's a couple little hairs, but cotton strands. Um, I'm going to do one more cursory glance just because I don't really trust my own work. I guess that wouldn't be a cursory glance, would it? Okay. So, slide this seal over that, just sort of wiggle it on down a little bit, and I'm going to take my DIY driving tool, and for now I'm just going to rock it on over that, squish it in there, and from here on I'm going to use a rubber mallet to, to gently drive that home. Make sure I don't have any big boogers in there, or rocks, or sticks. <clears throat> Nothing got in there. There's that seal again. Spring check. Spring is in there. Pull some of the hairs out of there. Just starting to get spit uh, rained on just a little bit. The start to dry. Oh. This guy, the mallet, actually really only worked as a place for me to lever off of. That's fine. As long as we're not messing up that lip of the seal, we should be okay. Can I do it somewhat evenly? that needs a little more on the left. Oh, 
oddly sketchy. Just sort of eyeballing this thing. Because sometimes you can really feel a seal seat on there, or if you're tapping it, you can hear the uh, the pitch of the taps change once it bottoms out, but not so much with this guy. Looks to be even all around, which is the important thing, because if it's not even, then I don't, the seal will not properly seat, is my guess. Whoa, you're really zoomed in. Let me zoom you back out a little. Oh, fuck. Apparently I stopped recording. I'm not really sure where I left off. Um, we're now on the driver's side, and it looks like I might have driven it too far, if that's even possible. See right next to the seal, that little ridge. It's from the inside of where the OE seal would have ridden. And I don't think I see it on this side, so I'm going to try to drive home the seal a little harder on the left side, on our left side, and hope that that balances that out. But I might be in here sometime soon to do that again, which is a nice thought. Okay, so I tried to drive it a little bit more, and I think I got some more of that inner seal ridge visible on the bottom, perhaps, but I have a feeling that this if, if this seal isn't designed to um, make up for some of that slack with how that lip, that inner lip is designed, then I may be back in here sometime soon, <sighs> which is kind of a bummer, but... Because I only have one set of seals, and I'm not about to pull that one out just to... Mm, fuck. Maybe I should. Hmm. No, I'm going to wait for it to fail. I don't think it'll be a fast leak if, if it does leak, and I think there's a chance that it might be okay. Should be ten of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There should be four of these. These are those spark plug tube seals. And those get pushed up against this. <clears throat> Here are those gasket or the uh, the timing cover seal, or excuse me, rocker cover seals. Make sure that all these guys are out as well. Looks like I didn't really clean the outside of this at all. I should have done this before I put that new, new gasket in. But that's okay. It's all going to get dirty eventually. So far, I've been enjoying this bottle of um, degreaser. It's uh, not, I don't think it's a solvent. It's, um, you sort of let it sit on the grease for a while and um, it slowly dissolves it, but it's not like harsh on the, on the hands and it doesn't like immediately strip it away like, I don't know, what does that? Brake cleaner or whatever. So far, this gasket is staying on pretty good. The uh, one that was on previously was totally flattened down. It was um, not raised like this, it was flattened. So I'm wondering if the OE one is like that. <clears throat> These keep popping out a little bit, like just a tiny bit. I, I know that you can, in theory, use a sealant to sort of dab around points where it's coming out and if you're just about to install it you can put that on, on and it'll sort of keep it where the seal is supposed to ride or where the gas is supposed to ride um, and then you can push it up there and then it'll make a really nice seal but uh, I'm not going to do that with this one because this feels, I'm not sure what material this is. Are you still recording? 
Felpro VS 5561R in China, but I'm not seeing molded rubber valve cover gasket, perma dry. I'm not sure what that material is. So I could use a sealer, but I'm not going to. It should be good. I'm just gonna, when I install these, I'm just gonna make sure that these are staying in there because these spots where the, the gasket sort of um, lifts out because it's very slightly undersized. I just want to make sure that these two points seal okay, those. The long ones go on the top and the short ones go on the bottom, including the middle. Okay, I've already done the driver's side. Now what can you see? I've got the valve cover and I've got all the five screws that hold it on. And I've got the two spark plug seals, so I'm just gonna put this to the side. I did a little bit of cleaning in the spark plug holes, but um, those always seem to get dirty. So that gets pushed onto there, seats nicely. Same with this guy. Okay, and ideally there wasn't any gasket maker on that head surface, so it's you know relatively clean. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll I'll deal with it uh, if I never need to do a if I ever need to do a head gasket job. I'm going to sort of stage these bolts nearby. Now there's three shorter ones and two longer ones. The two longer ones go on the top. So, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to make sure that these seals are properly riding in, in there. They sort of started to pull out, but mostly, I mean, they seem to be holding the shape better than other ones that I've seen, or other ones that I've used. So I'll go ahead and line this guy up gently. My arm is probably completely in your line of view. There, I'm just sort of grabbing onto it by the PCV hose, not super ideal, but I'll just hold that up against there, and I want to get these bolts started carefully so that they're not cross-threaded. There's one over there. Let's do the other long one. Okay, not feeling any cross thread going on. Now what I'll also do is I'll detach you. And I'll take a look at that back seal that I was worried if it was going to get unpinched or uh, or messed up in some way. So there we are. That's looking like it's riding in there decently. I always want to get the proper light so that you can see what you're doing. I don't foresee those things getting pinched at all. Now the torque spec is 5 newton meters for these, which is I think 3.6 foot-pounds. And luckily, these bolts just bottom out. Um, so, and there's a little bit of... Um, there's a little bit of extra torque required on the top end because the spark plug tube seals are um, pushing out further. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to get these guys started. This is pretty well lined up. I felt that one grab pretty much immediately. Do the same on this hard to reach one. I can. Getting these supers is hard to reach. There we go, let's thread it on. Easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the cover down gently. I'm going to go ahead and get a socket and a ratchet right there. 
going the right direction. The one down there I'm going to have to use a, a wrench for, but this guy should at least get us started. And I'm going to just make sure that it's seated properly on those rubber seals, because each of those seals is a place where, um, where an oil seep could begin, and we just want to minimize that if possible, of course. Of the gas can start to be drawn in, and I'm going to move down to the bottom. Again, try to keep a view for you, but I think that I'm just going to end up knocking everything over and not giving you a great vantage point. You know what, that bolt you can't even see, so I'm just going to run this one down. And I'm sort of doing a crisscross here, but. Um, sort of load balance as it goes down. I would I would think that almost more critical than balancing the tightness down since it's a um, uh, would be making sure that the gasket lines properly and that each of the um, bolt seals is uh, as accurate as possible. Okay, I was pinching down. Feel that bottom rightmost one, frontmost one, start to bind up. I'm gonna do this uh, the hard to reach one. And this one I will not be able to fit my torque wrench on, so I'm just gonna do it until it begins to seat, like I was mentioning. There it goes, it bottomed out. And again, keeping in mind this is an aluminum engine. Do not want to strip anything center one I completely avoided but it is still evenly threaded on there so go ahead and run that guy down until the rubber starts to grip and match it again I really want like a very teeny tiny low pro low profile quarter inch drive um, ratchet and socket set I think that'd be super handy for working on Subarus. Even the more low-profile low profile than these guys, I know they exist. It's pretty intuitive. Um, my truck's engine, the 22RE, doesn't have a bottom out point like that. You just tighten them until you uh, squeeze out the, uh, until you ruin the little seals. So you gotta be kinda careful with that. So all five of them are bottomed out. I'm. Uh, just going to torque them just for fun, just so you can see. I got this little baby um, inch pound and uh, newton meter torque wrench. So, five newton meters, which is what I'm looking for, is around 43 or 45 inch pounds, looks like. And you also won't be able to see this, sorry. But, uh,. No, maybe you can. I'm gonna look at it from the side so I can get a good angle, but uh, just there. That's five newton meters. Just barely enough. I probably was honestly doing more with the ratchet than I was with this thing, but it's good to be positive that you're doing it right. And just a little baby last step. Do a check on the rear. Make sure that the gasket looks like it's seated okay. It's sort of hard to tell, but. I can see a little more than you can, and it looks looks okay to me. I like that new get blue gasket. Um, yeah, so should be a new less leaky less leaky heads, and hopefully don't have to deal with them for a few years. That would be nice. Still concerned about that driver's side cam seal, though. I think I did that wrong, or may have messed it up. But I will find out down the road. I think. Okay, so <clears throat> when I was looking for a weep hole earlier, it was actually hidden behind because the water pump sits like this and run off that uh, timing belt there. 
<clears throat> but it's actually behind in the corner and it looks like it's been leaking from there for a while, I'd like to say. So, that's good. It means we do need a new water pump and that's the mystery of where all my coolant was going, I like to think. So, uh, yeah, let's go back out to the car. Yeah, so there's the gasket material. It seems like um, perhaps a dealer or somebody else has been in here since because it has some brand on there. Not entirely sure, but uh, there is where the pump sits. And I'm just going to make sure that I have a new seal for that, and then I should be able to um, install a new pump pretty easily. And I'm going to grab some uh, razor blades, some new ones, and go ahead and remove that old gasket material. Just so we can get a clean seal on the new water pump, because that would be foolish to do anything but that. Oops. Do a better angle there, sorry. Okay, I haven't been filming much of the recent process, but I'm using my old timing belt to secure or torque down these sprockets, um, the sprocket nuts. So I um, cleaned out the bore and threads of those bolts, but then, since you need a special tool to get these cam sprockets off officially, this one I was able to use a, um, a generic cam pulley grabber tool thing to get it off in the first place, but there's a pretty sweet little hack that you can do using an old timing belt to engage on some of the sprockets and to use the teeth on itself. I've got a few of the pulleys on there. This is the crank pulley there. If only I could actually film with any decent. Um, so you can see that it's not engaged the way it's supposed to, but basically I've pulled up most of the slack on the belt. It's still a little bit loose. Oh, it's still loose. But as long as the teeth are engaging on the belt itself, so the belt can't twist, and most of the slack is pulled up, you can see that I'm using this, um, what are these called? Whatever that is, to keep the belt pressed against itself. So yeah, the bolt, the uh, belt is sort of tightened up against itself. It's slack on the side that I'm tightening, but that's fine. See, you can see it's just sort of popping across, but if you just, if you merely use one hand to pinch the belt, so you're taking up the slack, then it'll pull against the belt itself and let you get that torque value. So I wouldn't do that on a new belt, but if you've got the old one and if you're doing the job, then that's a decent way to do it pretty easily. You can use bulldog clips or just that, um, what the hell is the name of that tool? Can you even see it? Man, this camera's not good at low light. Anyway, or big dynamic light. Anyway, that's a quick way to do that. I managed to dump a bunch of coolant on the ground, which was sweet. Um, but I did get these main heater core hoses connected. These are new Gates ones, and hopefully they last a while. Um, I've got the receipt if they don't. Um, replaced the special Subaru clips with generic hose clamps because uh, easier to service down the line. And water pump and thermostat are in there. There's a new thermostat gasket. And uh, yeah, I think at this point I need to get all the idler belts hooked up and the, the pre-tightened tensioner on there as well. Then I should be able to time the engine and put the covers on. Um, oh, I had to cut my own gasket for this guy. Um, on the back there, there's a special little spot where this plastic cover lines up with. Get this guy out of here. And well, below that sprocket, yeah, so. Anyway, I should be able to time it up now. <clears throat> okay. I have no light for you, but there's that crankshaft. And I'll give you an idea of the teeth pattern. That's where the little mark is. And there's a little orange paint dot up there. Oops. Should have been right about there when they timed it the last time. And I've got it going over here, underneath this idler, which has been torqued to 29 foot-pounds. Here's the crankshaft pulley. There again is our teeth. 
and there's two marks on this crankshaft pulley. The key should be on the very bottom at six o'clock. And you should be able to see that there. There should be an arrow pointing 90 degrees to the right. There. And there's that timing mark. This gates belt has little arrows pointing in the direction uh, to the, I guess, driver's side of the engine, which I believe is the rotation. And then we'll follow this underneath the tensioner, which is still got the grenade pin in it. And on over, boop de doop de doop to this side, which is tell, oh, well, that's me. Kind of hard to tell, but yeah, that's, that's where that mark should be. There's a little metal divot and the previous person put a crank timing mark there uh, on that camshaft position sensor. Um, so yeah. Uh, it was turned a little more to the right, but at this point I just, I have the teeth engaged properly and I haven't counted them, though they recommend counting them, but then also the numbers were different than what the service manual said and I'm just pretty confused in general. But um, anyway, now I just got to get the tension on the bottom. I rolled the engine over once. The, uh, the belt timing marks no longer line up with the uh, thing but I, I know that they were at the right positions when I started. So all that's left to do is to pull the pin and then tension this thing up. So the pin is pulled and I've basically checked that all the timing marks that were on the gears are accurate. Like you can see that mark, that pin one that somebody did and that timing mark is at the very top. And then on the right hand side, again, that's basically where it is. The uh, the line is painted a little bit weirdly and the dot isn't perfect on there, but you know, it's in, within a margin of error for these single overhead cam non-interference engines. And same with that. So yeah, we're good. already hot so I'll just show you it running I've been using it pretty regularly Feel that wobbly in the car. You can see I've had some coolant issues. But it seems to be holding now. AC so you can see it under a bit of load. 